This week at church, Pastor Robin McKinley continues the summer series, The Summer of Faith. So the question I have is, what do we believe? What are we believing God for in our lives? You can join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on 426 Laurelwood Road in Pottstown. That's right by the Coventry Mall. Also, if this ministry has touched you in any way, please send us an email at info at c3pottstown.com. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you enjoyed today's message. But to enter onto that path and follow it through will take faith. Takes faith. There's got to be a foundation of faith in everybody's life. I'm going to give you a few scriptures here just to kind of lay some foundation. In Hebrews chapter 10, the scripture says, My righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. In Hebrews chapter 11, the writer says, But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Therefore, the only way to gain God's approval is to live our life by faith. Faith in Christ Jesus. Faith is therefore an important issue and, and it's Vital that we learn how to live and be strengthened by faith in him. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 10, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So friends, it's vitally important that we get into his word. We hear what he has to say. We let the word of God speak into our lives. Well, there were two blind men in the, t t told to us in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 9, and they came to Jesus for healing, and they, Jesus asked them, said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said, yeah. And Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be so. Immediately, they could see. What Jesus said was that you get to choose. It's your choice how you live, what you want to believe. So the question I have is, what do we believe? What are we believing God for in our lives? Are we willing to say, Jesus Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, I got a couple other scriptures here. James chapter 4 says, Don't you know, or you don't have what you want because you don't ask for it. And even when you ask, he says, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want to give. You only want uh, me to give you what pleasures you. I have a wonderful illustration for that, but I, I'm going to move on. The Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, he says, don't be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication, and then he adds a prepositional phrase, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Paul tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians that we walk by faith and not by sight. So with all those scriptures laying the foundation, faith is the key that unlocks the doors and the windows of heaven. And it's very important, therefore, that we grow, develop, and strengthen our faith, because faith is expecting God's best for our life. And that's the name of this message, expecting God's best 
for your life. Now, in all of this, it's important to understand what faith isn't. What faith isn't. Positive thinking is what faith isn't. I mean, positive thinking can be a good thing, but it's limited in its scope and it certainly isn't faith. It may be, uh, let, me, let me give you this example. You might be freezing to death, okay? You might be chilled to the bone. And all the positive thinking in the world isn't going to warm you up. It just can't do it. Faith also isn't wishful thinking. It's not saying, I hope I don't have any problems today. Yeah, good luck with that, huh? Yeah. We're all going to have problems. We're all going to have difficulties. And no matter how wishful our thinking is, the reality is wishful thinking isn't going to change anything. Jesus makes that clear. Here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I've, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. He says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. So we're going to have problems because Jesus has overcome the world through his death and resurrection. We can overcome these evils and align ourselves up with Jesus. Wishful thinking would never do that. Instead, faith is expecting God. Faith is expecting God. It's expecting God's best. It's the confident assurance that God is in control of our future and his plans for our lives are always the best. In the psalm we read in Psalm 32, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Man, we can be assured today that our life in Christ is not in vain. Well, this could lead us to another question. Why should we trust God when so much bad has happened? Well, there's a long answer we could go into with that. There's a practical answer. There's a theological answer. Let's just take a look at the Bible, though. There's a story in the Bible. It's a well-known story. The reveals the faith that David had when he was facing gigantic problems, problems in his life that we also face gigantic problems. The story is about David and his battle with the giant Goliath. Israel and the Philistines, they are in a battle. Well, you can call it a battle. We got the Israelites over here on this hill. We've got the Philistines over here on this hill. And between the two, there's a little gulf or a little valley. And Goliath comes out every day. And you know what the giant says? Fee, fi, fo. Oh, that's a different story. <laughs> the giant comes out and says, send me your best guy. And let us fight. If I win, you serve us. And if you win, we'll serve you. Oh, how long did this go on? Who knows? I mean, he would come out every day and taunt them. He was intimidation personified. Let me tell you that. The guy was nine feet tall. And he would challenge them every day. This guy terrified the army of Israel. All except for one small shepherd boy. And while the rest of the army of Israel saw Goliath as being too big to fight. David saw Goliath as being too big to miss. Hallelujah. That's faith talking right there, friends. That's faith talking. You see, one plus God is always a majority. Always a majority. And when God is on our side and we're on God's side, how can we miss? So this story gives us some things that we can learn about faith. If you want to turn to it, it's in First uh, Samuel chapter 17, or it'll be on the screens here. 
But 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 46 says this. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. This is David talking to Goliath now. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. Well, what can we learn from this? We're starting with your notes now, if you're following along with your notes. First of all, faith honors God. Faith honors God. David's attitude can be seen in this when he said to Goliath, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. He says, because the battle is the Lord's. Not my battle, it's God's battle. You know, we love it when some people give us compliments. I mean, sometimes, especially guys, you know, they act like they, they really are embarrassed by that or, or they act like they don't like, oh, no, don't say that. Let me tell you, they like it. They like it. We, we like it when people brag on us. And, and it's the same thing with God. God loves it when we brag on him because he really can do everything. Here's what one person said, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. This type of faith honors God. Secondly, acting in faith strengthens our faith. Acting in faith strengthens our faith. Expecting God to show up increased David's strength and ability. David had the strength to hurl a stone. And God gave him the strength to sink it into one really hard head. God said, uh, God gave David strength, courage, and ability to accomplish this because of his faith. Now, in the story, David picks up five smooth stones. How many of you, as I'm telling the story, are, are hearing in your head Susie tell the story? Yeah, <laughs> our oldest son was a, raised his hand. <laughs> and uh, so some people have said that him picking up five stones instead of just one stone was a lack of faith. But not with David. It wasn't a lack of faith. I mean, if you read elsewhere in the scriptures, David had four other brothers. I mean, Goliath had four other brothers, And he might have had to knock them all down. But uh, it took him one stone. He says, I'm going to finish off Goliath. And then if I have to, I'll finish off his brothers too. You know, when we act in faith, God will give us additional strength. He'll give us strength to face the difficulties and the giants that are in our lives. Well, the next thing, acting in faith encourages others. I mean, this is really um, obvious in this story. The Bible tells us that after David defeated Goliath, it encouraged the rest of the army of Israel, and they attacked, and they routed the whole Philistine army. The entire nation of Israel was energized, was encouraged by David's faith. That, my friend, is what faith will do, the power that comes along with faith. We all face giants in our lives. They can be financial giants, medical giants. They can be relational giants. The question then becomes, how can we expect God's best when everything seems to be going wrong in our life? Well, let's let's take a look at some Psalms. To expect God's best when things are at their worst, we need to tune into God. Tune into him. All of us have our morning routines, don't we? We won't call them rituals. But the best time to start is in the morning. I mean, maybe with you it's a cup of coffee and read the newspaper or watch the news. But uh, whatever your routine is, 
How about adding starting your day with the Lord? Just start your day with the Lord. Here's what the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 5, and this is David writing it. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectedly. David received that spirit of great expectations from spending time with the Lord in the morning. Now don't be like Eeyore. You know who Eeyore is? You know the donkey on Winnie the Pooh? You know, we need to wake up saying, Good morning, Lord! Now if you have the spirit of Eeyore, you'd be saying, Good Lord, it's morning. Let's get up in the mornings expecting God's best for us in our lives. Greeting him enthusiastically. Getting tuned into him through his word. Receiving his promises and talking with him and allowing him to, to talk with us. Let's affirm what the Bible says in Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, the next thing that we need to do to expect God's best is think on his promises. Joshua told the children of Israel to meditate day and night on God's word. The psalmist tells tells us that it is absolutely vital even in our darkest times. In Psalm 119, it says, though the wicked hide among the way to kill me. How many knows that would be one of life's darkest times? Yeah. Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind on your laws. Now, this is part of my nature, okay? I'm pretty quiet when it comes down to it. I know some of you would argue about that, but I'm pretty introverted when it comes down to the bottom line. And I knew that people were along the way. I'd be saying, oh, dear Jesus, I know that you're right here with me. And I'd be doing it quietly. Now, some of you says, some of you would be going down through there saying, the Lord says that you can't touch me. <laughs> David says, just do it quietly. <laughs> do it quietly. Being mindful of the promises of God throughout the day will help us to face the threats that come our way. Whether you do it loud or soft, they will help us to keep going down the wrong path also. Here's what another verse in Psalm 119 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yeah. Help me, Lord, to stay on the same path. Help me, Lord, to stay away from sin. How does that happen? Hide his word in your life. Hide his word. Well, the third thing we need to do if we're going to expect God's best, and here's what the Lord says in Psalm 91, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. So the third thing is, Trust in God's love. When circumstances look bad or they look depressing, one of the things that we need to do is trust that God has our back. He's there. And that he has our best interest at heart. You know, the Bible says that all things are done for his glory, for his glory, and when they're done for his glory, he will also take care of us. Well, when trouble came against King David and threatened to swamp his life, he knew there was his hope laid in God, in trusting the Lord. And in Psalm 42, I I think this is wonderful, the the way he, he writes his thoughts out, okay? He says, why am I discouraged? He said, why am I so sad? And then he says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior 
and my Lord. I can relate to that. I can relate to when things are going bad. I can relate to when there's things happening that in the natural I should be worried about. I remember one time we were sitting with someone and something was really bothering Cindy and she was, she doesn't admit to this, okay? She wasn't, she didn't say she was worried about it. She uses the word concern. I think that the way she spells the word concern is W-O-R-R-Y at times. But that's, but uh, anyhow, the, the person looked at Cindy and says, let your husband worry about that. She says, he won't worry about it. And they said, exactly, exactly. And that's the way it is with God. Let God worry about it. Let God worry about it. You don't need to be discouraged. He says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him, I love it, again. I will praise him again. Remember a few years back, Corn Flakes had, had a commercial said, try them for the first time all over again. I love that commercial. It, it's kind of like our relationship with the Lord. Okay, Thank him for the first time all over again. And then tomorrow, do it again. And the next day, do it, or maybe the next hour. I don't know. I don't know. While David was in the midst of trials, he speaks about a better future because of God's love. Now, prior to facing Goliath, King Saul questioned David's credentials. He questioned them so much that he says, here's my armor. Try my armor on. David puts them on, you know, and, and he looks like the little kid with stuff hanging off him. He didn't, couldn't move. And he says, uh, I, I can't handle this stuff. He takes them off. And he looks at the king. Let me just paraphrase a little bit. He says, king, God's got my back. God's got my back. He'll take care of this giant. Just like he helped me to kill the bear and the lion as I was watching my father's sheep. Some of you today, you're going through difficult times. So please remember what God has done. Knowing that God is the same yesterday today and forever. So let's ask God to show us those times he has helped us in the past and expect him to do it again. And when things don't make sense, let's start out by with the things that we do know about. I mean, think about this. If you know Christ is your Lord and Savior, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for you to be saved so that you wouldn't perish in eternity and hell and damnation and if you don't know that today that's what the scripture says God so loved you that he did that for you seen hell. We've never even seen God. But we believe that he sent his son who history tells us came so that we could spend eternity with Jesus. That's faith. That's faith. Let's start at that place right there. Start right there. Let's trust in that unfailing and unconditional thing 
trials and the tribulations of this world with faith in God, laying them before him with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, because we can expect God's best. Let's move forward by faith. God has a plan. 